Welcome back to the Pro Tip series. Today we're going to showcase loading film on a desktop double-sided laminator that will be applicable to most desktop laminator solutions. Today's demonstration, we're going to be using the Duralam Integra desktop laminator. This is a duplex hot roll laminator. Currently there is no film loaded top or bottom and the machine is completely powered off in its cold position. All our laminate film in one inch core and two and a quarter inch core comes two rolls in a box. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna open the box and remove our new rolls of lamination film. There should be a threading card in every box that we're gonna use to load the laminator with. Remove our rolls of film from the box. Want to make sure both rolls are marked the same. This particular film, 3 mil, 25 inch by 250 by 1. I'm going to go ahead and remove the packaging. And then we remove our labels and take one winding of film off. Okay, so now I'm going to take my rolls of lamination film, load them onto my upper and lower mandrels. This particular model has a safety latch on the bottom of the feed tray. Release that and remove my feed tray. I now I have my lower mandrel assembly. On this model, it uses a teardrop knockout on the right-hand panel. If I raise this up, slide it in to remove it out of that keyway and pull my mandrel out. This particular model has some preset configurations for different width films. This film on the right hand side mandrel stop has a set screw in there so that will always stay in that position unless I am switching to a different width film. My left hand side with the thumb screw remove this core adapter for my one inch core. Now to load the lamination film I want to ensure that the gloss side of the laminate film is what is going to be touching my heated roller. So you can see the edge of my film, I've got a shiny side and I've got a dull side. The dull side on a gloss film is going to be the adhesive side. That is where the glue is. So when I load this roll, I always want the adhesive out away from the hot roller. So this roll of film will sit down in there so that my gloss side of my film is what touches the heated portion of the roller. I now take my lower mandrel, I'm going to slide it into the core, and I'm going to press that into the core. I turn this over, take my upper core adapter, slide that in, push that down, and then I can go ahead and tighten that knob. I'm going to take this roll of film, slide it in the keyway, drop that into position. Now I'm ready to load the film. On this particular model, it's got a drop away idler bar. So as you can see, this idler bar goes and locks up in that upper position. Some models, that lower idler bar is in the fixed position. This particular model, to allow it to load easier, it's got a candy cane slot that allows this to drop away for ease of loading. I now take my loose tail of lamination film, pull about 16 inches out, and I want to thread this underneath that bar. Now I'll take the film, pull taunt left and right, and I'm going to go ahead and drape it right over that top roller. I now give just a little bit more slack on that film, and I can now push this up in that position. You want that idler mandrel locked in that position. Now I'm going to take the slack back up again just ever so slightly. Now I'm ready to load the top side. Same again, lift up, push it through that teardrop and remove. Remove my left side mandrel core adapter. Here again, I wanna ensure that I'm loading the film the correct way. 
So I always get a visual that this laminate film positioned here, the shiny side is going to be what touches my top roller. I load that in. And as you can see, this film is centered on the mandrel, both left and right, um, with this having the prefixed positions. If you, I was running a narrower film, I would want it centered on the mandrel. You always want to keep the lamination film centered on the laminator. Drop that in. I'm going to take this film here, and with this idler bar, I'm going to go right over the top of it and drape that right down in. So now as you can see, where my two rollers intersect, that is what's called the nip point. So as you can see here, my films are overlapped, my bottom film and my upper film. And that's how you load a laminator in the cold position. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the laminator on. On the back side here is my main power switch. So I go ahead and turn that on. Now my film, on this particular film, it had said that I want to run it around 230 to 250 degrees. So I make sure that my temperature setting is roughly in that position. I'm going to go ahead, take my feed tray. Generally, most of the feed trays have a slot that aligns with a pin, both left and right. So you want to slide this in over top of those pins and then drop it down into position and engage the safety latch. This particular model has a safety circuit for both the safety shield as well as the feed tray. The shield must be down and the safety latch engaged in order for the machine to run. Now I'm ready to insert my threading card. Right now the laminator's only been turned on for a, about a minute and the rolls, the heated rolls up and bottom, um, are still in a cool position. They are not fully warmed up. So I'm gonna take my threading card. I just like tucking it in a little bit on the left, a little bit on the right, and then I go ahead and take my threading card and push it right in the center. I'm gonna set my speed for about halfway, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the run button. And I just gently push this in. It will now take the card and the film. On the back, I wanna make sure that that threading card is going between my back pull rollers. which it is. I also want to make sure that my cutting knife, if your laminator has that, is pushed off to the side. So now my film is coming out. What I like to do is take the film left and right and gently pull it because all the tension is in the center of the web right now. And that will just help get rid of the wrinkles at the start. Now the laminator has been sitting for about six minutes in warm up. My ready light is on on this model. Some models have a ready light, some just show a displayed temperature. Now I know that I'm ready to laminate. My film is wet out. I can see that the adhesive that was cloudy is now glossy. And I'm gonna go ahead and run about a foot of laminate film through the machine to make sure that it's all nice and sealed and no wrinkles. Um, if there are wrinkles, I can adjust the tensions before I start laminating my documents. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit run and I'm gonna pull this film out of the back of the machine because this film is loose right now. It's not fused to each other. So there's a tendency that it wants to statically stick to the back roller. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. I'm just gonna assist by pulling this film through until the fused film comes out the back of the machine. Now you can see where my laminate film is coming through, nice and clear, no wrinkles. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the machine. And now I'm gonna cut this tail off. This particular model has a built-in safety cutter. Some models do not, where you would use a knife to cut this loose bit of film off. So I'm gonna go ahead on the safety cutters. I wanna come in from the edge of the film about an inch I cut through, pull it back, and then retract all the way across. So make the cut. 
Now, for an experienced user, sometimes it is easier for them to change out the film when it is in a hot state. What we're going to replicate today, we're going to pretend that this roll of film has come to the end and it's empty and we're going to reload a new roll of film on while the machine is in a warm position. So use caution if you are uncomfortable with this method. We recommend that you cool the machine down until it is cold and go with the loading method we previously discussed. So I'm going to remove the feed tray. And on the lower portion here, I'm going to release a little bit of the film. I'm going to drop this lower bar down out of the way and then tighten the film back up. I'm now going to take a knife and I want to cut on the supply roll side of this lower silver bar. Never get a knife ever close to both our upper and lower rollers. They are very expensive and a costly repair. So now with my knife down here, I'm going to go ahead and make a cut across. And on the top, I'm going to go ahead and do the same. I'm going to go ahead and make a cut on the top here. And now this upper film, I'm just going to push that down out of the way. My upper film, I remove this. And for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to take the roll off and back on again. We're going to pretend that we took the roll of material off and then we reloaded it back on like we showed you previously. Now that we've got our new roll of film on, we go ahead, load this back into the holsters. Now I take my upper film, bring it across, and notice I'm pulling left and right at the same time so my film stays taut. There's no wrinkles in the middle of the film. And when I bring this down towards the upper roller, that upper roller is at about 250 degrees right now, so I can briefly touch it. But when I'm bringing this film down, I'm pulling left and right, keeping the film taut, and I go ahead and touch it right to the film that's already loaded in the machine. And you can see that this film fuses right to the film that's already loaded in the machine and webbed through. The advantages of this method are the fact that the film is already webbed through the machine, so it's less film used, and you don't run the risk of a wraparound as you do versus the cold method. So now to load the bottom, here again, I'm gonna go ahead and take a, about nine inches of film, a lot less than previously, and I'm gonna carefully go around this lower bar I want to be careful that this new film that I'm bringing, that I do not touch it to the, this film up here yet until I pull this toward me. And now I'm going to pull this loose film left and right. And I want to bring it in and touch it to that lower film. Go ahead and you can briefly touch this roller even though it's warm. You can just give it a quick few presses so that that has fused itself to the film that's already webbed in. Now I turn this roll a little bit to give it a little bit of slack, which allows me to bring this lower idler bar up into position. Now I can tighten that roll, lower my feed tray, go ahead and put my feed tray back into position, lock it in place. Now we're gonna send this film through and the overlap point you're gonna notice is gonna look ugly. Right where the films have done their overlap here. So you can see where there's bubbles and wrinkles, etc. And then that film's gonna clear out and you can see I'm back to nice clear film. So I can go ahead and hit pause and I'm going to trim this away and I can now go ahead and load my documents and run my machine. Thank you so much for joining today's pro tip of loading a duplex laminator. Trust it was beneficial for you and your application. Be sure to follow the complete pro tip series. Thank you.